Hello and welcome to Hydro Collectibles where we let our geek flag fly. My name's Luke and I'm your host and today we're discussing webbing. Before we get started, I'd like to encourage you to hit that subscribe button. We put out geeky content every week and if you'd like to be ahead of the curve, you can also hit the bell icon. So when we hear the word webbing, as comic book fans, we automatically think of Spider-Man. We think of web swinging, we think of web shooters, we think of a fantastic and very unique weaponry system that only Spider-Man could ever use. This of course has been incorporated by other Spider-themed characters over the years, including Venom. But yeah, Spider-Man was not the first to incorporate this design. There was a character some 20 odd years before Spider-Man that used webbing. Curious? Stay tuned to the video to find out more. So, we all know the story. Stan penciled the workings for Spider-Man in the early 60s and took it to Jack Kirby in order to draw the initial designs. However, upon receiving these designs from Jack, Stan was very unhappy with this, this design. We know very little of what this design looked like. We know that there were rumours of Spider-Man actually holding a web gun um, and using that in order to get across the city. This was a similar kind of tactic used by another spider character known as the Tarantula. Um, and I think Stan just really didn't like that idea. He didn't like the idea of his superhero using a gun. And so he turned to another artist, Steve Ditko, in order to redraw Jack Kirby's artwork and come up with a new design. So the key difference between the two designs, the one thing that Ditko's artwork had that Kirby's did not, was the replacement of the gun with wrist gauntlets. These gauntlets became known as web shooters and would be introduced in that very first issue of AF-15 where we saw Peter Parker creating them. These mechanical web shooters would take cartridges containing web fluid and it's important to make a note of this because this is going to come up later in the video. Those early panels in AF-15 really confused me as a child. Sure, it was great to see a young kid developing technology that would aid him in the battle against evil. However, he was bitten by a radioactive spider. And although he gained many other abilities, the ability to create his own web fluid organically was not one of them. And I just found that really odd. In Amazing Spider-Man Annual 1, we actually see some pictorials explaining some of Spider-Man's gadgets and abilities. And we hear that, you know, he has that uh, superior style brain to be able to create these web fluid. And he's actually like an expert on spiders. Whether or not this is connected to that initial spider bite, giving him a special insight, I'm not 100% certain. But it was a nice touch to see it added inside this comic book. We also get told that he has his utility belt in which he keeps the web fluid. And that he is able to change the consistency of the web fluid to better deal with certain aspects of his, his daily battles with the evildoers around the city. This could be anything from a fine spray to a thick blast or a strong cord for swinging upon. So with that in mind, let's go back to the beginning of this story. Who was this other character that appeared some 20 odd years before Spider-Man that used web swinging and web fluid in order to fight crime? Well, this of course was the Spider Queen. Who is the Spider Queen, I hear you ask? Well, this is a character that first appeared in the comic book The Eagle, issue number two, in 1941. That's right, 1941. The story unfolds with a woman and her scientist husband creating weaponry for the government. However, spies intervene and shoot her husband down. And seeking revenge, she decides to use this scientific technology, this web shooter that they have created, in order to seek revenge and fight crime. She realises very early on that she can use this fluid in order to attach herself and swing, it can hold her weight, and that she can weaponize it to use against her foes. She in turn creates two bracelets that she attaches to her wrists, which in turn leads us to the web shooters that we would later see by Steve Ditko. It is unclear whether or not we know that Steve actually read this book beforehand. We don't know if this kind of seeped its way into his subconscious and then came out in his work further down the line. There doesn't seem to be any evidence to prove that. However, personally, some 20 odd years earlier, I do believe that maybe he had 
encountered this book or heard of this story. And yeah, you know, out of the two, Spider-Man is the more well-known. The idea of the web shooters with this like bigger, bulkier frame and everything makes a lot more sense technology-wise rather than these little bracelets. But you can really see where that idea came from. The Spider Queen would eventually fall into public domain. Stay tuned for a video coming up on that. And uh, yeah, in 1993, Marvel themselves actually incorporated the character as a villain and a Nazi, no doubt, in the issue number one of The Invaders. I personally really like that Spider-Man has mechanical web shooters. I think it adds a vulnerability to a rather OP character. And yeah, it really builds up the tension. You know, the fact that mid-battle he could run out of web fluid and be at a disadvantage or that the web fluid deteriorates over time. You know, it just builds up the story. It makes it so much more interesting than just this super-powered, undefeatable character just swinging through the city fighting crime. But, of course, we haven't just had mechanical webbing. We have had organic webbing creep its way into the series. Yes, we started out with Spider-Man back in those early days showing us that he would have the mechanical webs. However, yeah, over time, writers have decided to pick and choose and change things for us. I do think a lot of this is to do with the Sam Raimi films, which in turn gave us that organic webbing with Tobey Maguire. And I think that is where they worked it into the comic books in order to best fit and sell the movie to the general public. In 2004, in Spectacular Spider-Man issue number 15, we see the Queen return. She uses her mutant saliva in a form of a kiss to mutate Peter into a giant spider. Peter is then hatched from this spider in a new human form, looking rather normal. However, there is one big change, and that change, of course, is organic web fluid. It's worth noting that the story arc, one of the worst that exists out there of One More Day, where Peter and MJ give up their marriage in order to take back his secret identity. Uh, it's a whole shambles of a mess, but this does actually undo the organic web fluid. However, there are a few plot holes along the way that would indicate that maybe certain memories of this actually exist. Again, it's all a bit of a mess and a reason why I do not like this story arc. So an example of this being so messy is of course that the Queen makes another return in the Spider Island story where she actually gives everyone organic webbing apart from Peter Parker. Now this obviously wouldn't be much of a difference. You just go, okay, he hasn't got the webbing, everyone else has, they're like the villains and he's still the hero, makes perfect sense. However, there is a scene where one of the characters is unable to create more web fluid. And so Peter basically gives her an example of what to do, saying, you know, you have to rest up, you have to eat these certain foods, and it will replenish in time. In the meantime, here, use one of my web shooters. It's It would indicate that he has that experience of having organic web fluid from before, and so that story must have taken place regardless of everyone's memories being wiped in one more day. Again, very messy. But regardless of all that, Let's just take this into the realms of reality, shall we? You know, as real as we can being comic book fans. Web swinging is incredibly dangerous and yeah, it would kill you. The important thing here to acknowledge is Spider-Man, although really cool, is still a man. Spider-Man. He is not a spider with human traits. He is a man with spider traits. And because of this, web swinging around the city the way he does could be fatal. Sure, he developed some awesome abilities from that initial spider bite. However, fundamentally, anatomically, he is still very much human. Spiders have an ectoskeleton, which enables their organs and blood to move freely within. And so when they swing about, they go about unharmed. It's an open circulatory system, which is basically a huge sac like heart. Humans, however, have a closed circulatory system, and such, gravity and the g-force would pull his blood down into his legs and not back up to his heart or brain. This is why flighter pilots wear compressed jeans and clothing in order to keep that blood up where it is needed. So yeah, as cool as it is, web swinging around the city, incredibly dangerous and not safe for anyone, least of all Spider-Man. So, there you have it. That is a little bit of history, a little bit of background, a little bit of knowledge on Spider-Man's webbing. Are you a fan of the mechanical web shooters or the organic webbing? Did you know about the Spider Queen beforehand? 
Do you believe that Steve Ditko also knew about this and incorporated it into his work? Let me know in the comment section below. It'd be great to hear from you guys. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, poke it right in the eye. And why not check out this video up here or this one down here. And if you haven't already subscribed, tap that button right over there. It really goes a long way to helping my channel grow. So until next time, I'll see you in another life. Take care.